This has got to be one of the most horrific domino stories on the internet. The classic robbery gone haywire. But there was something more unsettling to this than meets the eye. Here you can see the robber forcing two domino staff members into a location in which we will reveal later in the video. But we wanted to take it a step further and revolve it around a very similar case that happened at another Domino's venue. The culprit in question is shown in the photograph below. Here's a dramatized version of his heinous crime that went down that night. One day, I had to work the night shift with a co-worker, where the number of orders had already diminished and most of the remaining tasks, including sanitizing all surfaces, organizing equipment, and checking the inventory. Then, moments later, a creepy-looking bald dude with tattoos all over his neck, scalp, and body stood outside the restaurant, peering through the glass windows. At first, I didn't pay much attention thinking he must have just been contemplating whether to buy something or to head home instead. But as 15 minutes went by, my colleague and I noticed the man still standing there, glaring at us from a distance. There was just something off about this dude. He had this psychotic grin on his face and was clearly holding something behind his back. All our other customers had already left. However, we still had about 30 minutes before closing. And when you're in a tight, nerve-wracking situation like this, you just want to leave. You couldn't help but sweat copiously, wondering how time could move so slow. As much as we wanted to call the police, we had to restrain ourselves from doing so, because the guy wasn't breaking any laws, and since we were going to clock out soon anyway. My colleague, Nadine, had been traumatized from her previous job at a convenience store, where she encountered a robber during a night shift. So as she trembled, she said, Hey, Josh, why don't you put on the closing sign and lock the door? We don't have any other customers anyway. Besides, you're the man around here. You're the one who should hold down the fort in case of any threats. Threat? This guy wasn't committing any criminal act. Well, at least not yet. However, even if he wasn't causing us any physical harm, Nadine and I felt the same way. Something was awfully unsettling about this guy, and with one hand neatly tucked behind him, I couldn't tell what he was hiding or planning to do. I gulped as I sauntered towards the front door, but as I reached for the handle, the odd man jutted out his right foot, preventing me from closing the door. Then, in a blink of an eye, he held the door with one hand while the other remained behind his back, glowering at me as he drew a menacing smile. Not so fast, Mr. Goody Two-Shoes, the man said with sarcasm, still maintaining eye contact. From the reflection on the glass windows, I could see Nadine hyperventilating. I wanted to say something that would calm her down, but at that moment, my priority was to drive this man away. I wasn't the most athletic person, and I never learned martial arts or self-defense tactics when I was younger. So, intimidating him was not an option. Therefore, I did the most typical thing a restaurant staff member would say, and that was, <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but we're already closed. Please come back tomorrow. What, tomorrow? I'm such an idiot. Why would I encourage this freak to come back the following day? The man's face was turning red, almost like he could no longer contain his anger. So, as he went in, he wrapped his arms around my neck, whispering things to my ear which only a madman would do. I only came here for a pizza, okay? Besides, you think I was stupid? I know that Domino still welcomes customers late at night, so you have no right to refuse my request. I could feel his muscles stiffen with tension. How dare you look down on me? Is that how you treat your customers here? I felt something heavy tapping my back. Soon, I realized that it must have been an object that he was concealing behind him. It was subtle, but I knew it was a warning. Then, without a moment too soon, he unwrapped his arm around my neck, revealing the machete in his other hand. Hearing my colleague scream, I shut my eyes briefly as the machete was put into motion, and there it was. I heard it in full swing, the sound of a sharp metal object cutting through the air. Then, as I opened my eyes again, my forearm down to my hand was lying lifeless on the floor, surrounded by the blood that continued to pour. The only thing I focused on at that very moment was the searing pain, filling me with fantastic terrors I had never felt before. Ah! 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 
Unfortunately, my colleague was still behind the counter, too scared to make a move. Then, he pointed behind me while shouting, Go behind the counter where I can see the both of yous, and don't do anything stupid, you got that? We did as he demanded, and then he pulled out his machete again and instructed us to move toward the cold room. Nadine was shedding rivers of tears as she tied a piece of white cloth around my wound, begging the man for mercy. Wrapping his hand around her mouth, he replied deliriously, Shut it, woman! You saw what I did to your friend, didn't you? If any of you try to defy me, I won't hesitate to slice you into pieces! You understand? She nodded, her body quivering in fear. Moments later, the man told us to stay in the chiller room and never come out, unless he asked us to. I had no idea what he wanted to do with us next. He could rob the restaurant for all I care, but the most important thing was that Nadine and I could make it out of here alive. So, I attempted to reason with him despite my deteriorating condition. We don't have to do this, man. If it's money you want, I'll generously hand it to you. Just please, please let us live. The man snickered, still pointing his machete at us and said, <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. That won't do. Just when he was about to strike once more, Nadine raised her hands and said, Okay, okay, we'll get into the cold room. We'll do everything you say. Just, just don't hurt us, please. As he shut the heavy door, Nadine sat beside me, helping me to stay warm amidst the temperature drop. A few minutes later, I felt my body becoming numb, but before I had a chance to speak, my vision became foggy until I was surrounded by darkness. When I woke up, I already found myself in a hospital bed, my right arm covered in bandages. As the police dropped by, they showed me the surveillance footage, and there I saw how the culprit warily opened the safe, gathered all the cash he could take with him, and turned on the oven, intending to burn the whole place down with me and my colleague in it. Then, while he was attending to the oven, two police officers quickly apprehended him. Soon, I found out that Nadine had called the cops with her cell phone and waited for them to arrive before she opened the chiller room, allowing the paramedics to take us in. If the cops arrived late, Nadine and I could have gotten frostbite, or even worse, burn alive from the oven. The next story was inspired by a video of a customer showcasing his Domino's pizza, except to contain an extra selection of topping than what he initially ordered. For all the Domino's pizza lovers, sorry in advance. More details at the end of the story. I know it shouldn't be a competition, but I think I have the saddest life out of anyone I know. It wasn't always this way. I was once skinny and in love, with the perfect job and a promising future. It's nobody's fault but my own that I threw all of those things away for nothing. It was the pizza that did it. No, it wasn't the pizza, it was me. The pizza was just an unhealthy coping mechanism that I latched onto when I got depressed. To be specific, the Domino's pizza. I used to work at Domino's, which gave me an almost unlimited access to all the pizza I could eat. I missed that job. Working there was probably the happiest time of my life. It's where I met the woman of my dreams, the woman who would become my girlfriend after a while, and unfortunately, the woman who would become my ex. Since then, my diet was the first thing to suffer. The stress I was under caused me to fixate on one type of food, which led me to start eating a lot more pizza. And I mean a lot. I would have a whole pizza on my lunch break. Then at the end of my shift, I would take home two more. One for dinner, and one for breakfast the next morning. And I would never even think about eating any other kind of pizza. Not Pizza Hut, not Papa John's, no frozen garbage, not even New York style from a mom and pop shop. I fabricated reasons to hate any kind of pizza that wasn't Domino's. Because Domino's was more than just pizza to me. It was an escape. My girlfriend couldn't handle being around my addiction. She was the first one to call it what it was. To her credit, it wasn't my ballooning waistline that turned her away. She wasn't shallow like that. 
No, she left me because I started to neglect her. It didn't take long into my spiral before the pizza started to get more attention than her. I can't stand you anymore! You care about pizza more than you care about me! Don't act like I don't notice you turning over at night to eat leftover crust! What the hell happened to you? I wasn't even able to respond. My mouth was always full, always chewing. Pizza was my life. She dumped me on sight, and since then, things took a turn for the worst. We still worked at the same dominoes, but she wouldn't look me in the eyes. I fell into a pit of self-loathing and lost track of my responsibilities. I started coming to work having gone days without showering, calling out way too much, and zoning out to daydream about my next meal while in the middle of a task. But the last straw was when they caught me eating a customer's order. It had been sitting on the counter for almost an hour and I really thought they were never coming to pick it up. So I couldn't resist helping myself. But the moment I took a bite, the customer walked in and they were not happy. They reported me to my manager and along with everything else, they decided it was time to let me go. I wasn't able to find another job at that point because I was already 450 pounds with more gaining to go. Within a few months, I was flat broke and I was forced to move back in with my parents. They would make me feel even more guilty for mooching off of them, which sent me even further into my depression. My addiction, and my weight, got so bad that I was barely able to get out of bed, let alone go outside and face the shame of public perception. But instead of taking that as a sign to stop, I let myself go entirely. A year or so later, very little has changed, except for the worse. It's too hard for me to get up every time I have to use the bathroom these days. So I have a bucket that I keep at my bedside that I use to relieve myself. My mom comes in every few hours and dumps it out for me. And I still eat Domino's pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I have to order delivery every single day with what little money I make online. But there's one other reason I always order delivery. Even though most people, Domino's employees included, prefer online ordering through the main Domino's website. I always call the store I used to work at directly. I know my ex still works there, and even though I don't know her schedule, I know there's always a chance that she'll be the one picking up the phone. Uh, hi. Is Sarah there? <sighs> Speaking! Who is this? Hi, sweetie. I miss the sound of your voice. You want a pizza me? Ugh, it's you. What the hell do you want to order? I'll give you a pizza, my mind. Two extra large hand-tossed pies, one cheese and one meat lovers with a two liter Sprite to wash it all down. Oh, and one order of chocolate lava cakes for dessert. Anything else with your order? Is there any chance I could get a special order of you? I want a pizza that action. Hell no! Download Tinder and leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! That's how it would usually go down when I got her on the phone. I'd make my pitiful attempt to get her back and she'd shut me down. I was still crying over the most recent rejection when my mother finally brought me my antidote. She looked at me with great sadness then left me alone. All while eating, I couldn't stop thinking about how everyone in my life probably resents me for being a useless slob and a burden who ruined his own life. With all the tears streaming into my mouth, I could hardly taste the pizza. I barely even chewed it. I just shoved whole slices down my throat, spilling the sauce all over my face and down my flabby chin. But I didn't get to the lava cakes before I got sick. My stomach started doing flips, and I knew I was about to throw up. <coughs> but I couldn't even get out of bed for that. All the food was still laying on my stomach. I didn't even roll over. I just threw up all over myself and sat there in it. I was violently ill, too. It didn't just dribble down my chin. It sprayed all over me from head to toe. Mom! Dad! I need help! I called for help, and both my mom and dad came rushing into my bedroom. For a moment, I thought I'd maybe gotten food poisoning, or I'd simply eaten too much too fast. But that changed when my mother screamed. Ah! Why the hell are there worms on you? She got hysterical in a flash, running out of the room in disgust. While she was gone, I picked through the chunks of vomit that were still left on my stomach, and there I discovered what had freaked her out. There were worms swimming inside my vomit, crawling over my body and feasting on my partially digested pizza. I had no idea how they got there, but I figured in the moment that they'd simply grown out of the filth that accumulated in the folds of fat that surrounded me. But that wasn't the case. After some discussion of which I couldn't make out the words, my mom and dad came back into the room and put the leftover pizza in front of me. I was confused as to why, until my dad peeled back the layer of cheese and revealed the same worms were already underneath the pizza I had scarfed down. I never felt more disgusted with myself in my life, but there's only one explanation. My ex-girlfriend wanted so badly to be rid of me that she laced live worms into my pizza. 
knowing I would eat it without thinking. The next story might be one of the most outrageous stories we've ever covered. It involves two Domino staff members going at it with one another, but the backstory behind it is, well, see for yourself. The next animation portrays a dramatized version of the alleged occurrence. Here's what it looked like. I've never been the kind of person to let others push them around. I learned a long time ago that being submissive to people is just no way to live. I say that, and I don't know what I did to earn this karma, but I seem to attract control freak personalities in my life. The most recent example is my old manager from Domino's. I don't want him to have any more reason to come after me than he already does, so I'll just use the name Josh to refer to him. Every employee agreed that he was controlling and needlessly particular about everything. Because he was a grade A cheapskate, he had all these unnecessary, unofficial rules to increase profit margins and cleanliness. Like when we made a large pepperoni pizza, we were to use no more and no less than 10 pieces of pepperoni to cover the whole pizza. If that doesn't sound like enough pepperoni to you, that's because it's not enough. We were constantly getting complaints from customers about this practice, but no matter how nasty the customers were, Josh refused to change the policy. He frequently got into screaming matches with customers that ended up getting banned. Um, excuse me? Who's the manager here? That would be me, ma'am. What's the problem? This. There's only one pepperoni on each slice. Are you kidding me? What's the deal here? Why skimp me on the only topping I requested? We didn't skimp you. You got the proper amount. Oh, bite me. This is ridiculous. Well, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. I will go somewhere else. You just lost a customer. You mean we just lost a tramp? Don't ever come back or I'll call the cops. Jerk, deadbeat. But it wasn't just the customers he would scream at if he heard something he didn't like. If you were one of his employees and you got on his bad side, you were guaranteed to get yelled at for something every single shift, no matter what. Somehow, though, my co-workers didn't believe me about this. It usually only takes two people to run the store during most hours, so most people didn't get to see firsthand the way Josh treated me. According to them, although he was particular and nitpicky, he was respectful to his employees as long as they followed the rules and usually took out his frustrations on the customers who questioned his business practices. Unfortunately, I'm a stubborn person. I don't like to just sit down and do whatever people tell me to do if I genuinely believe that it's wrong. And I know the 10 pepperoni thing might sound ridiculous, but I always thought that if I paid full price for a large pepperoni pizza and got a small's worth of topping, I'd be pretty miffed. And it's worse how he always acted like a child when he didn't get his way. I couldn't let it stand. That's how I got in the habit of finding little ways to mess with him. The first time I challenged him, it went about the way you'd expect. It was just me and him working, and there was an order for a large pepperoni. I put 11 pieces on it instead of 10, then popped it in the oven. Of course, because Josh couldn't let me take care of a pizza on my own from start to finish, he went and grabbed the pie out of the oven before I could, and almost immediately he flipped out. I was at the register taking someone's order when I heard a loud banging from the back, and I knew that Josh was pounding his fists on the table. 
Then came the screaming as he stormed up and chewed me out right in front of the customer. Are you stupid? Can you not count? I should fire you for this! Dude, it's one slice of pepperoni. Chill out. No, no, no! Don't tell me what to do! I'm the boss! I say ten, and it'll be ten! Do you hear me? Do you? <sighs> yeah, alright, fine. I hear you. Ten slices of pepperoni next time. You know what? Go home and come back tomorrow! You're wasting my time and pepperoni, dimwit! Are you freaking serious? And don't forget to clock out! I went home that day more pissed off than I'd ever been over anything in my entire life. He wasn't just being unfair, he was being vindictive and threatening my livelihood. I seethed over it the entire night, and before long I knew that one way or another, this was going to come to an end the very next day. I came into work the next afternoon on my best behavior, in a totally fake sort of way. I worked as hard as I always did. The only thing I changed was that I momentarily swallowed my pride and sucked up to him so his childish need for total control over everything could be satisfied, just so I would be able to tear it down all over again. I waited until there was another order for a large pepperoni, then, I took action. I did the same, minor, insignificant deviation from Josh's requirement. Then, I popped it in the oven like everything was totally normal. Josh was already suspicious of me. I knew he would have seen the ticket for the large pep, so he'd be checking the oven before I knew it. I retreated to the walk-in cooler and started frantically sorting the dough trays. I felt my blood pressure already rising out of regret for the deed I just committed. I was pissed off at that in and of itself, the fact that I was so fraught with anxiety over the matter of a single slice of pepperoni. But it got worse when Josh started screaming again. Ah, seriously? Again? Why? I heard him stomping through the kitchen, looking for me. I grabbed a loaded tray and tried to leave the cooler with it in my hands, but Josh blocked me at the doorway. You did it on purpose, didn't you? Oh my god, why do you care? Right then, I could see his face turn hot red as I held a pizza tray up as a shield, in which he hit it out of my hands. What's wrong with you? Shut up! Shut the hell up! Josh swung his fist again, but instead of aiming it at me, he punched the wall right between us so hard that it froze me to my core. He started screaming, drooling, and crying all at once, all while pummeling the wall with the same fist. I don't know how many times he hit the wall, but I was deathly afraid the entire time that he would suddenly switch this unhinged, raging violence onto me. But at the same time that I was petrified with fear, I was also really embarrassed and just sad at the sight of a grown man acting like this. Eventually, the skin on his knuckles started to break. I could tell he was stunned with himself and out of breath for the moment. So, I picked up the dough tray and walked away. You dropped a dough ball! You're wasting more expensive ingredients, tramp! What in hell? Just because you can't satisfy your wife doesn't mean you have to take it out on us! After I let him have a piece of my mind, plus a lot of other unsavory things I'd been saving up to cut him down, I walked out and left him hanging for the rest of the day. He tried to fire me again, but I was already in the process of reporting him to corporate. However, they wouldn't do more than suspend him for a day until I was able to convince an old worker of mine, who shall not be named, to sneak into the office and steal the security footage of the whole ordeal. After that got sent to HR, it was an open and shut case. He was immediately terminated the day of. But after sharing my story with the internet, now that the camera footage is online, the nightmares at Domino's has resurfaced my psyche. I'll give you a pizza, my mind. Two extra-large hand-tossed pies, one cheese and one meat lovers with a two-liter Sprite to wash it all down. Oh, and one order of chocolate lava cakes for dessert. Anything else with your order? Is there any chance I could get a special order of you? I want a pizza that action. 